What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? That time of the day, that time of the week, that time of the month. Yep. What the fuck is <laughs> You're listening yep. to the good, the band, the ugly. I'm Big Papa, and I'm Jeff. I'm just gonna call you. Yep. Yep. Such an idiot. <laughs> Coming to you live from the oh. Ultimate Ears Studio. studio. Yeah, I, I like think that. that's what we're gonna call this from now on. The Ultimate so. Ears Studio. Yep. Told them I would mention it a shit ton of Ultimate Ears. Ultimate Ears. The Ultimate. Cannot say enough about Ultimate Ears. Ultimate Ears. So. Studio. Yep. Here we are. Ultimate Ears. Right there. Handcrafted specifically for Mike yeah. Big Papa, Papa. Diulio. Yep. So shout out to our friends at Ultimate Ears. I think I said it enough that time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe three thousand more Ooh, times. Uh, we have a great show for you guys today. We appreciate you being around. Yep, um, I do. think you guys are going to be excited because I am. we've had. I yeah, we've been talking about this. Uh, our guest is uh, shares a stage with some some vibrant cats. Yep, um, but. I've watched the videos. He doesn't. He is not your typical st- stage prop that sits around. Oh. We had one of those. We had. We, we had. Did. We had we the did. Tin Man with yeah. no oil. Right. It sat. We just propped him up in the back. And I love when those guys. Yeah. That you're describing. Yeah. Step out front and just like give crush it, all. it. Crush you it. Know, give it all. Yeah. So, without further ado, Mister Storman. Norman. Norman. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Yes. There he is. Hey, I'm going to switch this over here. Like this. How you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Is the sound good? Am I loud enough? Or is yeah, you louder? Or... Oh, you're perfect. That won't let me do it. Oh, great. Fuckers. How you doing, man? You're perfect. I am doing great. Fantastic. So, perfect. Just the way you are. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Dude, we are, oh. we've been excited about yeah. you coming on because, like I said, uh, in the intro, not many guys that uh, play bass move around as much. You are you are an exception to yeah, the you rule. Are. Um, I th- I think the good Porsche. That's what that's what gets me to try to book you guys is the guys that just get it. Um, right. We've we've had bass players in the past that just just stand there and do their thing. Yeah, we call we call them the oil can. Yep. or the uh, we call them the the t- Tin Man. And we're like, yeah. why doesn't he ever move? Right, right. And we've I had understand it. sometimes you have to pick him up and move them off stage when you're done. Or you have to <laughs> you have to make sure that he has the right set list in front of him. Well that too. We're not gonna mention the fact that our first <laughs> bass player no. playing one of our earlier shows yeah. started the set. He started and got with the... three songs in, he started on set two. And we're like, Man, nothing sounds right. Yeah. This just doesn't sound right. It's nothing's right. And I'm like, what what song are you playing? He's like, I'm playing Cat Dragged In. I'm like, you jackass. That's the second that's set. That's the second set. <laughs> We're like, no wonder why it doesn't no sound wonder, right. Well, that's, it didn't sound too far off from the first set anyways. But still, <laughs> oh, he didn't last long. I know it. <laughs> it doesn't take much brains to play bass. But wow, if you're not even realizing what song you're on. <laughs> yeah, right. Dude, it was. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Interesting. Yeah. That's yeah, all I'm going to say. It's interesting. Yeah, and it's funny. We waited till we got later in life because you know when you first start in your garage band phase, right? Every little freaking thing, you're not gigging. You're just playing in the garage, and everything matters. Yeah, it's like, dude, showed up to rehearsal without without your cool leather vest on or your shirt <laughs> or your chain <laughs> hanging off your belt loop. You're, you're not going to do this, and then when you get older, you're like. Oh, dude, you're not gonna wear sweatpants on stage, are you? It's like fuck <laughs> on, this place sucks. <laughs> okay. yeah, right, right, right. Again? Okay, yeah, right. Okay. You wore those last right. you wore those you shorts wore yesterday. Show. Yeah. So so when we see guys that are putting it I saw you at the house mowing the lawn in those. You shut up. I don't mow the lawn. Uh <laughs> you don't yeah. have a lawn. So it's uh it's cool to see how much you guys put into into your into your show. You know, it is a show. It's not just Yeah, yeah. It's I'll not just you. five guys. So when I, I, I People ask me, who is my uh, influence as far as bass players? And I'll always say right away, it goes to me in the early 80s. I'm from Virginia. And so Kicks, the band Kicks was from oh, Maryland. Oh, yeah. Yup. So I saw them a lot. They were the band I saw the most in my youth. They got me started. But the bass player, his name was Donnie Purnell. Don, yep. Yep. And he was Angus Young on bass. Yeah. You know, he played with this reckless abandon. 
Like it was, he, first you think he's drunk, like he's going to fall over. He's going to fall off the stage, but he keep always kept it together. Yeah. You know, just crazy yeah. bouncing, but never where he lost it. He always was a pro too. It was just, I, even though kicks again, one of my favorite bands of all time, I could watch the drum drummer or the guitar players or the singer. Yeah. But as a young kid, I was like, Wow, I've never seen that before on bass. And by the way, I'm not a I'm not really a bass player. I've been a, a, a lead guitar player my whole life. So I'm also a Angus Young fan. Right. When I play lead guitar, I'm ang I'm just crazy like Angus because to me it's all about putting on the show, playing like it's the last day of your life, and you get to play music on the last day of your life, and exactly. you still have energy, kind of thing. Dude. So when I had a chance now to then play bass for Brett, um, and by the way. Uh, I don't tell me if I'm jumping ahead of your questions. Only nope, you're uh, fine. I'll, I don't. I didn't even own a base, but <laughs> Eric Brittingham, yep, was leaving Brett, and he was very cool. He said, "Use my base. You can have my, you know, have my base. I'm still playing Dean, uh, uh, Eric's, Eric's base? Dean bass guitar. Oh my God, that's crazy. so. Since he flips around his base like yes. he does, yes. the strap has no adjustment, and it's screwed in with screws on both sides. So I can't adjust it at all. And I would never play a bass that low. But when I play it, it's like um, Donnie Purnell played his bass so low. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, wow, I'm forced to play like Donnie Purnell. So then I'm like, okay, I'm doing right, that. I'm that's in. my new. That's... <laughs> Are you doing the flip? So, Are you doing the flip? No, I have never, I have not had the guts to do the flip. You know what this me. means, right? And you know what? I, do you know I what? Just be wrong. Do you know what this means? <laughs> no. Uh, nah, don't do it. Don't, don't be such a pussy. Don't. Just do it. Oh. <laughs> He's like, you know, dude, you just said. I, just, listen, yeah. I tried it with a guitar, and I damn near knocked myself out. Okay? Dude, so. right. 1988, <laughs> we're doing a video here. Yeah. Guitar player's up there. He decides to go this way with it, not, no, not right. back to front. Right. He goes front to back. I'm walking behind him. <laughs> don't realize it. Bang! This fucking thing cracks me under the chin and i am boom down down goes frazier man yeah and and he's like dude i, th I think you just fucked up the neck of my guitar i'm like you're not suing me because you hit me in the face with your guitar Have you, you seen my chin yeah right yeah <laughs> whose fault is it here right <laughs> what a typical you know yep pete yeah so i dude i i know exactly what you're saying i <laughs> it's like no nope not today but it's locked in. It's not it going is, anywhere. I know it's not, but right. it's you have to get it just right. And if you don't get it just right, you're gonna crack yourself. You are too. gonna crack yourself in the skull. And don't ever try it from the body first. You always grab the neck and but, go around. But keep in mind, back in the '80s, man, you didn't have so, wireless. Oh, no, you had you recorded right. bass, so you had to step over it the right way, or you, you're really gonna right. smack yourself. That too. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. I'm hey, telling. back in high school, I did it all the time. I would do front to back with my guitar. Yeah. Well, I saw okay. how Eric only does it back yes. to front. Right. You know? And people are like, he's very stupid. Then, then I would feel like, oh, look at Norm. He thinks he's Eric now or something. You know, like, right. Right, you know. He, to me, I remember being a little kid watching Cinderella. Yep. You know, yeah. both, they did it at the same time, and I was just so blown away. So, you know what? I don't want to now pretend like, oh, now it's I'm him now or whatever. I don't know. But it's I'm also was... scared too. I don't want to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, if it was if it was a shitty bass that you didn't care about, you'd be like, I'm, ah, let's try it. But right, right. But, you know, it'll be the it's one his. show. It'll be the one show. Yeah, it will. Comes loose, knocks a drummer's tooth out or yep. something. You know, right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he's gonna Brent be going right behind me. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah like, exactly. <laughs> he's gonna go like this. <laughs> Fucking podcast, guys. <laughs> It's been the last time I I'm talked like, to him. Like high five, and we did yep. that. <laughs> yep. Right, right, right. Dude, that's cool. Yeah. So you you yeah. you came into the world uh, playing guitar. Was was the Brett Michael thing? Was this like your first national trip? Or okay, okay. Well, you know, in a yes, in a sense. Although back in the '90s, I used to play in this punk rock band called the Meat Men. That was pretty big. We uh, toured the country several times, but in a van. It was the van. It was just sort of the. But uh, we actually uh, hooked up with Guar. If you know the band, yes. Guar. Oh, I oh, do. Yeah. Lost, oh, I do. Lost Horizon. Played days. the Lost Horizon yes, a ton. Sir. Yeah. Okay, so we uh, toured with them, do like month long tours in the '90s. But that all went away, and then I was just still playing with in my own band, playing guitar. Um, 
And uh, Pete Evick, who I've known for 20 years, he's uh, Brett's lead guitar, guitar player, player for yeah. the last 20 years. Yep. Right. So he also has his own band here in Virginia. So uh, he was uh, his band was playing a wedding, and he needed a lead guitar player because this guy just couldn't make the date. So uh, I said, oh, I can do it. Have me play. Because sure, that sounds great, yeah. So uh, I learned like 30 songs just for this wedding. Well, not for the wedding, just because I knew I was playing with Pete Evick, who plays with Brett Michaels. <laughs> right. So uh, if I want to show anybody that I can learn songs quick, He's here, the guy yep, to show. Comes. So lo and behold, yeah, that was in May of 21. And then in September, Eric thought he had COVID and he said, I'm not playing Friday. And it was a Tuesday. So Pete thought, who can I get to real quick to sit in, you know, step in. So I can get Storm and Norman's yeah. who I can get. Dude, that's cool. Right. You know? Yes. I, I think, yeah. you know, we've heard, you don't want to say that. We've heard the Cinderella story. Yeah. Uh, of of shit like this happening where it's feast or famine um, for guys as far as landing that one gig that all of a sudden, boom, you're there. Uh, yeah. Ben? Yeah. Ben's story. So Ben Morrow's from Syracuse. And then, you know, fast forward 30 years later. Yeah. He's, he's down in New York City or whatever and gets a phone call that says Lionel Richie needs a guitar player. Oh, uh, no, I wasn't. Oh, yeah. It was, it was Aretha Franklin or uh, Tina no. Turner. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. He yeah. Play, yeah, he got. He was playing clubs. Pl yeah, he's playing clubs in New York, and somebody says, "Hey, we need a guitar player that that can play, you know, R and B type mm -hmm. music." And Ben yeah. said, "He goes, yeah, I'll do it. What, what's the it. gig?" He goes, "Show up at Madison Square Gardens with these songs, like Friday." Uh -huh. Yeah, no rehearsal, just walk in, and he he says he's like walking in through the garage entrance. With his guitar, right. you know, like, yep. uh, hi, I'm I'm here. They're like, who the hell are you? He's like, I'm supposed to play guitar tonight. And you're like, yeah, sure you are. <laughs> you know? That's and great, then, kid. The yeah. door's over there. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's 20 years with Lionel Richie. Yeah. He's he's 10 years with Cher. Yep. He's with... Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Eagles. Oh, Don, Don Felder Don from the Felder. Eagles. He's like, he's driving home one day, and the phone rings. It was and, hey, so, this is it's Don the, Felder. And he's like, yeah, sure it is. The story was so funny. He uh, said he's driving home in his pickup. His phone rings. It's Don Felder. He's like, yeah, okay. He goes, no, seriously. And he got, he finally got he's, through that. Yep, this is Don Felder. He's like, holy shit, I had to he pull goes, over. <laughs> Come on up to my house. We'll jam some songs. And wow. sure enough, he goes up there and lands a gig with Don Felder. I, I like the best part. You know this one? Yeah. Do you Hotel know California. One? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, I think I could, I think I could wing do you, it. <laughs> do you know life in the fast lane? Do you know the beginning? Yep. Okay. It's like, he's like, I'm standing in this fucking guy's living room, you know, jamming. How great. How great. Yeah. So, I mean, I tell you what, I have a newfound appreciation for Don Felder. We played with him twice in the last six months and I never was like, man, that's the guy who wrote the riffs. He was the good, you know, yeah. the life in the fast lane. What a cool, the coolest riff ever to intro to his right. song and co-wrote Hotel Cal, you know, what a great guy. What a great show. We're touring with him uh, this summer, actually. Oh, that's cool. Did you so, know, look, did you know that, the beginning riff of that um, life in the fast lane was actually just a finger exercise. Oh really? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. How yep. amazing. Right. Told you. <laughs> yep. He doesn't say much, but what he does, it's some dumb shit. That's so cool. That's right, cool. Right, it's right. cool. Dumb right. shit. Yep. Did you right. know that he was allergic to oatmeal? <laughs> what the fuck well, that I don't know. So. <laughs> Which is so funny only because I learned that riff just recently. Cause I think it's so cool. I'm like, wow, this is sort of hard. Wow, I could do this more than one time. Yes. Oh, okay. Now it's hell. You know. Yep. It was <laughs> so a finger. It exercise. is an exercise. Yep. <laughs> yes. Guess who? Guess he's looking for his next gig already. It's like, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were going to do sound check right after. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, you you can play that opening riff on the bass. Yep. Yep. I sure can. Watch can. me go. Want to see me play it backwards? Yep. <laughs> I, yeah, can, right, exactly. I can do it while I'm throwing oh, my. Man. No, I can't. No, you can't do it. Can't throw my guitar over for Don Felder. I, I've already been. I've been thinking of like, man, I'm gonna learn Hotel California and just during sound check, just say, hey, can I just do it once with you and videotape it? You know, just right. to say I did. Just to say right. You did. <laughs> yes, that is the coolest thing. <laughs> See, you know what I love about the fact that this is, you're still, um, it's you're still your head's still going, holy shit. It's on a swivel, All right. you know. You know where some some guys have been playing for so long, yeah. That they're it's I don't want to say they're jaded. No, they're not. But it's just they're just so used to seeing. Oh hey, there goes Getty Lee, or right. oh hey, there's 
you know, Ripper, or yeah. there's whoever it is. I mean, there's these these people that you've grown up listening to, whether it was guys from ACDC or Kiss or whoever uh, or whoever really. really. I, mean, I mean, Cinderella, Poison, Motley yeah. Crue, Rat. You know, Vic, well, seeing the girls play from Vixen. Vixen. Yeah, I mean, you just had. Uh, um, oh Jesus! I um, holy shit, Tyson. Tyson. Right Tyson yeah, yeah. played keyboards for you guys for a couple shows. Connecticut. He yeah, did. yeah, yeah. And great. Tyson's playing with Vixen, and he plays Jesus. Right. That, that that kid plays Everything. everywhere. Everything and everywhere. Super he's, talented. A, he's a hard yes. working guy. And yes, very talented. Right. And um but I was like, Oh so I texted him, I'm like, Hey, I see you're playing with Brett Michaels tonight. And he's like, Yeah, it's pretty fucking cool. I'm like, Yeah, well, if you get a chance, mention to 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 you know to Storm and Norman over there that mention they're gonna be the, on the show too. Mention our name. Yeah. <laughs> so So it's a yeah. small world. Yeah, you know. Right. Oh, sure. Once you once you get into the industry or business, you realize that it all. Who knows who? Who's ready? the one manage the manager of Jefferson Starship also books all the bands and runs M three. You know, it's, yes. that's funny. Like, oh wow, you know, we toured with Starship. And we're like, hey, what's your name? Who are you? Oh wow, you book M three? What? Yeah, you're the guy I always wanted to meet in my life. Kind yep. of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I I wanted to say earlier because you say I, you know I take. To me, I because I just had a conversation this weekend. Is it ever hard, or what? people always ask me these kind of questions? But I tell myself, of course, it gets hard with traveling and getting up early and not getting much sleep. But I every weekend I treat it as I won a contest. Like let's say if it was a radio contest that Brett Michaels is flying me out to see him front row, or no, you're actually going to be on the side of the stage to see the band. No, actually, you're going to play with him. Right. You know. Right. So like, no, really. <laughs> So that I and I love it all, and you know whoever's opening up for us, like last two weeks ago or last week, it was Lita Ford opened up. Mm -hmm. I'm front row center. I'm front row center because I've always been the Lita Ford fan and the Runaways my whole life. So how could I not be front row? Because I get a chance to walk front row and exactly. pass my silly badge and right. do it. Of course I'm going to do that. You know, it, it's, well, it's, it's your Wayne's World moment. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. it's your Wayne's World moment. Many yeah. Wayne's World moments, dude. Yeah. That's how I f I yeah, felt that go. way at, at at Nam for God's sake. You know, I mean, I'm yeah. walking around the Nam show and I'm, and and I've got the endorsed artist tag, so people are kind of looking at you and going, "All right, so you must have some validity to you." Or people uh, who are there. going, "Who who who's that guy?" I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm like nobody. <laughs> I'm endorsed by the popcorn vendor, <laughs> right. you know, so, or whatever. Don't they shake don't, my hand. They don't know, you know. Yeah. But I had that same moment. I'm like, look at me, you know. Beat me with a red line, beating yeah. guys like Joel Holstra yeah. and and Marco Mendoza and guys mm -hmm. like that, and he's like, "Yeah, cool," you know. So yes. the fact that yeah. you still you still have that, um, what's the word I'm looking My 13 for? Thirteen year old, the thirteen year old in there, me, yeah, oh, keep yeah. in me, yeah. Yes. There you go. And, I, and and you know we we know guys that have been doing this a long time that still keep that um, that freshness in them. That they they still look at the world with the right colored glasses and not paint it over, just shades of dark black and gray. You know, um, yeah, yeah. guys like Jeff Totoro, who's a great friend yeah. of the show, plays with Blue Man Group, plays with Count Seventy Seven, Stormy Curtis. We don't have all night to name every, his but everybody he, <laughs> but he's friends with everybody. But, but he he's is, just like yeah. this. He's like. Yeah, they're Very just they're cool and and I like them. They like me. And he's calling me and he's like, "You need to get this guy on. He just won a Grammy. He's going to be on your show." And I'm like, "Cool. Okay. Thank you. You're making my job so much easier." You know, so to have that yeah. that uh, just you admire the people and and you respect what they're doing mm -hmm. still. And it's not you're not jaded. All I right. think that's freaking awesome. I think to me, music changes lives you know music's the great connector of people and oh. so i i want to keep it that way when people say hey what how, what gets you psyched up before you go on stage because that's another thing people say am i going to be able to meet you at the show because i was like yeah because i'm going to be in the crowd before we go on because what gets me going before we go on i'm in the crowd because that's that it takes me back to my 13 or 15 year old self yeah where you know my first show was 15 with ozzy osbourne 
with UFO opening up at the Cap oh, wow. Center in Maryland. And it was uh, Brad Gillis on guitar, actually, because it oh, was wow. uh, two months after um, Randy, uh, Randy died, had, yeah, which I got yeah. to tell him that story is my first show, you know. But it's that excitement. That's where the excitement is. You know, a show's about to begin, and everyone's getting excited. So that's where I want to be before the show. Backstage, there ain't nothing going, you know. Everyone's right. sort of sitting around doing it, you know, but in the crowd. That's what gets me going. And then when I hear this certain song, we're two songs before we go on, then I'll go backstage just so everyone knows I'm here and I'm ready to play kind of thing. When that's that, cool. when that that's hap- like typical. When that happens, and this is this is why we don't we don't follow some end, mm-hmm. some script. It's all we wing it. Um, when that happens, you've been sitting out front. Maybe the people around you don't get who you are at that point. And do you see the reaction? Oh, yeah. They're going, holy fuck. I was just that guy standing was just, so, next to him. He just stepped on my girlfriend's toe. Right. You know, yeah. no, it's cool. It just, <laughs> it just happened only because, like I said, I was front row center for Lita Ford. And the guy, so the guy next to me, hey, can I stand next to you? Because I didn't know if I was taking his girlfriend's spot. But there was a spot, but empty yeah. right there. So he goes, oh, yeah, damn it. And I, we're both jamming out. And afterward, I said, that was so great. And he goes, it was so great. So then to see his face. Where ten minutes or fifteen minutes later, I'm now on stage, and he was just like, high <laughs> <laughs> five, like God. that's awesome, yeah, you know. that's so cool. So I love that moment, right? Yeah. I did love that. <laughs> that's great. I'm one of you. I'm one of yes. you. I'm not the guy who lives on the mountain of rock and roll. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the burning not bush is not at the top of my hill. Right, yeah. <laughs> right giving right, down right. the rock <laughs> commandments. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yep. right. I have, exactly. do not. I do not play with man of war. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's that's so cool it i mean is. lita ford especially i have a personal place in my heart for lita ford i mean when i was like uh 17 no i was older than that i think i was about 19 we have a local club here and and everybody has come through it um it's Syracuse oh, at God, one yeah. point the lost horizon was notorious for it was that it was that leapfrog between a Buffalo gig and maybe a New York City gig, and they would always stop, stop in the and middle, play here, and we would have, oh, everybody we, from yeah. Kid Rock, AC or not AC, Kid Rock, Bon Jovi, Lita Ford, mm-hmm. Cinderella, Tesla, Motley Crue, everybody yeah, played Striper, here. Striper, I mean, everybody played here. Uh, yeah. Twisted Sister multiple yeah. times, so Lita Ford's playing, and she's still huge. And I get a phone call from the club owner says, "I need you to do me a favor." Come on down here. I need you to, to to run somebody around town while they're here. And I've done it before, and it's usually, you know, the stage manager <laughs> right. or the engineer who needs batteries or some dumb shit. Right, right. So I get there, and, and Lita Ford's in her prime. It's the, like, 87, 88, yep. and she's standing in front of me. Okay. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> you know, and, and he oh, goes, "You're going to take Lita for you're going to take Lita to the to the mall that they just opened this huge mall here." Yep. She's like, "Oh, let's go! You're going to be my boyfriend for the day." I'm like, "You, I've already been your boyfriend for <laughs> three years, there, honey. <laughs> you just don't know how many times we've we're we've kissed." <laughs> yeah, right, right. So we're walking All around right, the mall, you know, and she's like hamming it up, got her arm around me and stuff, and and I'm just the dumb young nineteen year old kid just just beaming you know yeah. um so just to, to, awesome. to see her now i'm like she still looks hot you know she, and she's such <laughs> a great entertainer and everything and right, right. so down yeah. to earth you know yep just can't yeah. get her on she the show the life that's for sure man <laughs> oh for sure we need to get her on the show so i can just relive that moment oh <laughs> she'll remember you yeah. Oh, you're that 19 year old kid. Boy, I've my whole life I've been trying to find you again. Lies and lies. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's all I'm going to hear. That was you. Ultimate ears or not, I'm going to hear that coming into my ears. <laughs> so your last quick uh, last quick story of uh, that kind of thing was uh, we were on the Rock Legends cruise uh, two weeks ago, and so we played. We just played our show, and I, I see this drummer who I saw play on the show, this uh, unknown band, Jax Hollow was the band, but I thought they were great. And I watched him and I said, dude, I saw you play drums. You're amazing. He went to uh, MIB, MIT, whatever that. Yes. Berkeley School of Berkeley Music. School Berkeley of School of Music. Music. Yeah. Yep. So I, I go, man, what do you, I said, uh, come back here, come back here. This is where we're played on the pool stage of the cruise ship. So 
I said, come back here. Let's let's have it. You want to let's hang out right here. And he goes, oh, okay. Uh, you want a beer? I have a beer. And, he, and after like 15 minutes, he goes, well, why are we why are we here? You guys finished your show and everything. I go because Sammy Hagar is coming on in 10 minutes. So if we keep standing here, Sammy Hagar and Jason Bonham yeah. and Michael Anthony, Anthony. are going to be standing here also. Yep. Right. So this guy's probably 22 or so. And uh, it was just that and we're talking that I finally go, Sammy Hagar's walking this way. Sammy Hagar's walking. He's walking up now. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't fast enough to get a, my camera ready. But Sam, it's funny because Sammy sees me and I'm still in my stage gear. So he's looking at me sort of like, should I know you from somewhere? Who's right. this guy? You know what right. I mean? Yep. So I got, hey, Sammy, great to see you. Have a great show. And then right behind him was Michael Anthony. And that's when I had, at least I had my camera ready. Said, hey, awesome. can we get a picture? So it really was, again, my 13-year-old, yep. the um, Wayne and Garth moment. <laughs> yeah, you know. we're not worthy. We're scum. Right. But so, you know, Sammy is 76 years old and still belting it out. Oh, it's God, just yes. unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. So so impressed, so blown away by him. Yeah, that's Loved cool. I, I, uh, yeah. I told Jeff when I was out, at, and I keep talking about Nam because it just blew me away, but I'm getting fitted for my my ears, and uh, I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden I look up, and getting fitted for hers, oh, is freaking Debbie Gibson, and she's like, she's like, you know, that far away, you know, without without getting arrested, I'm just sitting there going, <laughs> freaking Debbie Gibson, it's you know, she's like, she's like, I'm oh. surprised you didn't whip out your Playboy thing that you had and said, here, would you sign this, please? Uh, yeah, that's what I carry. <laughs> I didn't want to take a picture of her. I felt like, cause she had a handler that was going to kill somebody and rip really? her face off if uh, you got close uh, to her. And she's like, yeah, I guess we're all part of the ultimate ears family now. And I'm like, yeah, okay. no, you're not part of my family. That would be really weird. weird. <laughs> but uh, unless, yeah, but it, it, it was just so cool. And I was having that moment. I'm like, I don't, I don't, the guy's like, okay, you're all set. I'm like, shouldn't you do that one ear one more time? I think I moved. <laughs> I don't want to leave. Hi, hi, just me sitting here. <laughs> it's me staring at you. Want to be on my podcast? Do you, <laughs> do you feel a burning in your back somehow? Yeah. And meanwhile, I'm with two of my chucklehead friends. Oh, and yeah. my buddy's like, all right, as soon as their handler turns, I'm jumping in. I'm getting a picture. I'm like, don't yeah. be that dick. Yeah, don't. He was that, don't he was that dick. Yeah, yeah, of course he was. He's like, you're my biggest, I'm your biggest fan. You're the reason I do what I do. Click. And she's just like. Creeper, can you get away from me? Where's my Where's my alert? Where's my right. I've fallen where's and I can't get up? away from this stalker alert button. Yeah. So and now you think, and then you think, should I do it now too? Why didn't he steal that from me? I could have done. Dude, it. I was. Th I'm going, motherfucker. I'm like, so my buddy's like, just go up to her and get the picture. I'm like, no, no, I don't want to be that guy. Right, and right, and right. as I'm even tell, am I telling you this in the back of my head? I'm like, you should have been that guy. No, you shouldn't. Uh, yes, you should have. Fuck uh, him. Uh, yeah. 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 Angel right. angel devil so on either shoulder, you know? Jeebu. Right, yeah. right, right. You know? should have done that. So I would have been right there with you, dude. I'm like, all right, don't make, make no sudden movements. Sammy Hagar's behind me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, what's hey. up, Sammy? Uh, yeah, I just got done <laughs> yeah. warming the stage up for you. <sighs> I'm available <laughs> yeah. on Thursdays. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. again, I have, I don't know the cool thing. That I have a good show, and he's like, Okay, is that all you're going to give me? Then I'm going to keep walking. You know? Right, yeah. Sure. See who I am? How come they, come they say something amazing? <laughs> <laughs> nice pants. No, damn it. That just yeah, came out right, weird. Right, right. I see you're still driving 55. <laughs> right, oh, right, crap. right, yeah. Sorry, wrong one. Oh, I, Dude. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so funny. We're, one of those artists, uh, our friend is, we're sitting out there in California, and he sees this guy that he's like, oh, Oh my God, I got to get a picture with him. He's like, Hey, do you mind if I get a picture with you? And the guy's like, uh, I'm, I'm literally going in the men's room that you're standing in front of. Oh, and as a joke, he goes, I mean, if you want to come in, you could take a picture in there. But, and he's like, No, no, we'll just wait. I'm like, I hope when you shake his hands, his hands are still wet on purpose. And he's like, Hey, right, 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 yep. right. just, you know, wondering if you wash those hands. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was one of those moments that uh, you don't want to be around the family no. friends, you know. So, so when you when you started with Brett, had you met him before? Well, I'm sorry. Yes, I did. I forgot. I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, because of me knowing Pete, the guitar player, yeah. for so long, 
I think um, in 2019, we opened up for them twice. Um, okay. And then on the first time, Pete was nice enough to, at the end, he did the whole meet and greet of meeting 200 people. And then we're at the very end of the line just saying, hey, this is Storm and Norman, he opened up for you guys. Um, and by the way, the funny side story is that uh, I have, a, I did this one comedy thing on YouTube. It was like eight episodes of this quick comedy thing show called Full on Frank. But anyways, <clears throat> Pete was like, thought he shared it. He thought that was the funniest thing ever. And he also said, man, when me and Brett are in Scottsdale, we would sit and watch your show on YouTube. So I should tell him, Brett, you, I don't know if you remember Norman. This is the guy who did that show we watched in Scottsdale. And Brett was very nice. Go, oh, of course I do, even though I'm sure he didn't. But anyways, right. Right. Uh, that was the cool thing. So, yeah, I didn't meet him before, but that was uh, like two years before uh, I got the chance to play in the play with him. But the funny thing was, so there was a Tuesday where he says, can you play on Friday? I said, sure. After asking my wife, and then said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Honey, what are we doing tomorrow? <laughs> You're not doing. Oh no, yeah. We Go doing ahead. anything this weekend? And I said. I said. I said to Pete. I said I gotta ask my wife first. I called my wife, and I said, "Hey, can I play with Brad Michaels on Friday?" <laughs> she, 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 you know, I can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. She, she's been great. She's been. But the next day, the next day, Pete goes. You know what? Why you come over to my house. To over, I have. He has a garage that type thing. Um, why not, let's go over the songs together. You know, the show, this is now Wednesday and the show is in two days. I want to make sure you got them down. I said, sounds great. I would love to do that also. And I sing at senior homes a lot. So I had my PA in my car and I had my whole setup in my car. So it's great. Yeah. I'll even set up my little sound system. So uh, I, right before I get there, he calls me. He just goes, I forgot to tell you, Rhett's here also. Oh, so I go, no pressure. Oh, okay. Good thing you played right. the senior center, so you got some depends in the car. Yeah. No <laughs> pressure. <laughs> so uh, I'm setting up my little PA, and I have my acoustic there, and my microphone stand, and uh, and actually the um, drummer for the band was setting up all in this li this garage because she was new to the. I actually got Mary, and I knew Mary. I said, "Have Mary play in the band. She's great." So she's pretty new. She's only been playing with Brett for a month at that time. She's setting up, and Brett comes in, and he right away grabs my acoustic. And I just set up the PA, and he right away he just starts singing Every Rose with his the acoustic, my acoustic, oh, wow. and my mic. <laughs> so it was very surreal in that right away we're just playing all the – like we're a high school band in a garage getting together for the first time to see if we should form a band or not or whatever. Oh, that's cool. Or, may, or I'm the guy trying – I'm the new guy trying out for this band, right. and this singer has a few songs that – he thinks you're, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. he's, he, uh, Brett was just all energy, even in the garage, <laughs> dancing around, do, like he was in front of a 10,000 people. That's, you awesome. know, and he was, it was so cool. So at the end, he goes, I like your energy. Can't wait for Friday. And he walks out and leaves. And me and Mary are just left there. And I go, that was the most surreal thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So awesome. That, that was awesome. To be yeah. able to, to be able to have him come in and just be like, you know what, dude? I like your energy. I'll see you Friday. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's like that commercial with where they've got slashes there, and the in the garage, the kids are like, "You got, you're the in, gig. you got the gig," and he's yeah. like, "Yes." You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's cool though. Yep. <laughs> man, I know a couple of people great. that would have uh, would have would pay high dollars oh. to sit there and watch yeah, every sure. rose being performed. Oh uh, no, poor. Right. Oh <laughs> uh, no! Yeah. We we have, we have a lo we have a local fan that uh, just he's all about that song, and he sings it. And every oh, really? every okay. local band that covers it, it's like you see him from across the room as soon as you start playing the opening riff, and oh. you're like, and he oh, just here we go, yep. here he comes. He's dressed yeah, yeah. up. He's got his rock regalia on. He's gonna sing. Go, he he's is gonna, Mr. Warnstar. He's gonna. He is. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna stand right there in front of the stage, waiting for you to go. Yep. Come on up. Yep. And then, uh, that's when the bands uh, usually go. Yeah. Now we were kidding. We're not playing this. Ah, uh, just kidding. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's like playing Do the opening. Give him his moment again. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, you know what? The more the more we played, the more you realize it is about the people you're playing for. It's not about yourself. And sure. there was sure. times that we would play and I'd I'd have someone come up and sing and knowing knowing very well this was not going to go not going to go well very well and right. they, and these guys are like 
Why? What are you Why doing? do you have her get up and I'm like, you know why? No, I think it was more of why do you hate us? No, but, but <laughs> you know what? Watching the look on her face when she got yeah. done singing those songs yes. to the best of her ability. Dude, that was worth everybody. I don't care what anybody said. That was worth the moment. Watching right. someone who doesn't do this for and is not right. even locally jaded. Just to watch their happiness on their face, I'm like, there it is, right. and and then finding out weeks later that she went to your show knowing you were going to maybe ask her to sing, and she took she paid to have private voice lessons to oh, learn wow. that one song. Just, yeah, how can you how can you say no to that? You know, right, right. so I mean, yep. there's there's people I'm sure that are watching you play, and and just as as thrilled as you are to be there, they're they're saying, God, I wish I could be him. You know, so I think it's cool that you're down in the trenches with those guys in front row and you're and you're digging the show that you're watching. And and then they get to see you get up there. And I think it gives hope, gives hope to those people. And right. you could be right. uh, a, uh, a young 50 something. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, right. An, an, an aging going. 50 something like myself. <laughs> and I still you're such a dick. Yeah, I know you're looking know. like, fuck Love you. It. You're old, you prick. <laughs> But you know what? I'm watching. Jagger's still doing it at an age. Right. So hey, exactly. Yeah. And I'm and I'm standing it was doing it, it, doing it, doing well. it well. I'm yeah. standing there the other night and I'm watching Mr. Big and I'm watching him play and I'm like, dude, it's bringing back. It's just going back in the days. Or I'm watching the Vixen, you know, the girls from Vixen just yeah. crushing it and I'm going, man, it's 1980 something all over again. But right. but it's ten o'clock and I'm getting tired, <laughs> and I just got to go to bed, you know. Right. Uh, right. Do you have so, so Norman? Let me ask you: What is your favorite song to play on the set? I mean, you know what I think is um, well, two. Uh, okay. I have a video of me from 1987 in with my terrible cover band from back then playing <laughs> Talk, "Talk Dirty to Me." Okay. Like a two months after it came out. Right. And I even have, I have a video that I actually melded that video into me playing it with Brett. So we always oh, open cool. up with that. So that's always the super excitement yep. part of the night. You know, everyone, when you see, like, when he, he first runs out on stage, the mm -hmm. scream, the Beatles type scream. Yeah. And the crowd just losing it and then going into that song. And you could just see the look on everyone's faces, just like on mine, of back to 1987. Of maybe he played it with his band or what? You know, anyways, yeah, that feeling. But also with him when he does um, something to believe in. He, okay, uh, everyone like light, lights their phone up, and it's just. And it's usually he brings out uh, military veterans or first responders. Just also that that moving that goosebump movement. Yeah, uh, moment also. So yeah. those two yeah. right there, man. Cool. Love it. Love it. I think. Yeah. I think if Mike and I had to pick, I know our. I know one of our favorite ones. Go ahead. Cat dragged in. Yeah, that's what I said. I mean, I'm. Yeah. I love. Uh, yeah, yeah. I love that. Sh I just love that song. And then it got to the point right. where I like. I liked opening with it because. I think it's great to okay. open. Yeah, with right. It. Yeah, because yes. you're telling the story. And then there was there's two other songs that I like, but he doesn't play them live ever, that I'm aware of. Go ahead. Love on the rocks. Which is off the open up and say mm -hmm. ah album, right? Yeah. He does. I remember someone else asked him that, and he goes, "I don't know if we'll ever play that live, or if they have ever played that live." Play live, oh really? Yeah, yeah. Huh. So you can, I don't know. We've, I've listen, never played it. <laughs> talk him into it. Yeah, we want to. <laughs> we want to feel like we've made a, a a mark on this world. Yeah, and we've got something right. to happen. <laughs> but before you do, you, yeah, that sounds good. You just got to yell out the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> This is for you guys. Yeah. Big Papa. <laughs> Big Papa, your hat's stupid. <laughs> hey, I almost wore I, he, he's a he rocks the hats on stage. All right. Well, you know, it's funny. I don't know if you you know, two two and a half years ago, almost three years ago when I first started, I had some short hair. <laughs> oh. So I was like, I gotta put something up there. <laughs> right. Do you have uh, I was... do you your fa so you you have a what you're married. Do you have kids? Two kids. Yeah. How, how old are they? Yeah. Do you mind if I ask? My son's twenty. No, yeah, of course, twenty-seven and eighteen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. my daughter at at twenty-six. Are so they involved in music? Th are they are they digging that dad's doing this, or is it almost to the point where it's like, 
Yeah, it was cool the first couple months, but yeah, have fun, Dad. Oh, they love it. My son's been to a we. She, he, they've all come to several shows. My son was at one where we was in front of forty thousand people. We this barefoot on the beach, kind of in Wildwood, New Jersey. It was a country test actually, but uh, for him to be there, forty thousand people, he's like, oh wow, this is impressive. You know? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I yeah, they love it. So every now and then, you know, I bring my wife. It just took my wife on the cruise. You know. Like, Hey, we're going on a cruise. All expenses paid. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and Peck a bag, honey, we're leaving. I don't think he really, I think he, he knew damn well there was not going to be a way that she wasn't going to go on that cruise. I mean, let's face uh, it. Exactly. It's not like, exactly. I, um, honey, I know you don't have any vacation days left. Um, <laughs> and I was waiting for you to use the last two. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I forgot to tell you we're going on a cruise. What? We're going on a cruise. Huh? On a cruise honey. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> right. That's that allows me to leave the house every weekend yeah. of the year. Uh, because Brett so and then this weekend we're uh, going to Las Vegas. So she's coming it's Brett's birthday kibosh. So uh, okay. she's coming along to that too. She comes to the cool shows. Yeah. yeah. Where you so pl- it's all great. It all works out great. Where are you playing uh where are you playing out there? Are you playing the vamp or no, no, it's called the Virgin Hotel. It used to be the Hard Rock Hotel. There's some the-, the theater in the Virgin Hotel. We'll find out. Nice. Looks great. I, I looked online. It looks awesome, yeah. I think, yeah. or maybe it already passed, and you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, but did you guys play Del Lago uh, in Waterloo? We did. Yeah. Like, uh, like that, a month That name ago? rings a bell. Where is it? It's in Waterloo, New York. Between yeah. Yeah. Between Syracuse and Rochester. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a really cool place. I remember now. Yeah. We played there twice, I think, even. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. Near the, what do um, they call it, the Silver Lakes? Not the Silver, Finger Lakes. Or Finger something. Lakes, so, yeah. Sort of in that area. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for the invite. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's one of the Finger Lakes right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that I know where you guys are from, of course. Yeah, we will I totally know. avoid yeah. anything central New York. Yes, exactly. <laughs> We're never coming yeah. back again. No, um, it's yeah. it's cool. That, that's, so you guys, you, Vegas. There's so many guys that we that we've had on our show that are out there, and uh, cool. Go see the Blue Man Group. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Right. If oh, you get you a know, chance, we're looking for something to do out there. So that, yeah. Seriously, Love see it. the Blue Man Group, yeah. and if you do the day before, if you seriously want to do it, let me know. I'll get a hold of Jeff's been with them. For thirty oh. years, he's been he's part of the original crew. Yeah, he's he's oh maybe he's yeah. the, he's the drum. He's been one of the original drummers, mm-hmm. not in blue. He's the guy's up in the rafters playing the full kit. Oh, okay, okay. And <laughs> um, he's had. I mean, Jesus, they've had everybody you can mm-hmm. think of. He's like sitting there watching guys from Metallica, you know, standing like rocking out to his stuff, and he's like, right, dude, fucking right, right. But but Jeff's that's amazing. Jeff's a great guy, yeah. and. uh I'm sure if I said, "Hey, we got the guys from the Brett Michaels camp, and they want to have that," you know, he and his wife and whoever, he would hook you up. Yeah, yeah. You know, All right. Give you a, okay. give you a Let tour. Do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. We'll 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 hook you up. We have to look at what the time is. <laughs> Forty three minutes thirty three seconds. <laughs> Jeff Tatora, selfish plug. Yeah. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, listen, you say his name one more time, it's like Beetlejuice will appear. It's all right. We mention him on every show because we do. Because if Jeff wasn't around, we would not have one third of our freaking cool people. No. So because it's all oh, yeah, yeah. it's all kind of chained into. It is. You know. It is. Um, okay. But yeah, he's always hooked up people that uh, that have been good to good to people. I mean, he's he's just a good shit. So, All right. So since you've been I'm doing amazed, this, by the way, so there's there's Blue Man Group in Las Vegas, but there's also a huge building in Orlando. Yeah, I guess they just now you are the blue guy or what? They they hand it out now to new people. They, to, they do. They have they one. Branch. In, they have Boston. There's Boston. Boston. Yeah, they have like an east and a west. Yeah, almost. And then they have a touring. They have a touring yep. Blue Man Group yep. that that not all the time, but when they do, they tour the the world. He he did the tour did for the tour. six mm-hmm. years. Yeah. About six years, and yeah. he's like, "Dude, I was in, I was in Russia, I was in in oh, cool. Egypt, I was yeah. in Istanbul, I was in Turkey, and he's all over the place. Mm-hmm. Filled like three. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. So uh, only on TV. It kind of thing, a song here or there. So I would it's, love to check that out. Yeah, it's absolutely. a phenomenal. It is phenomenal show. It, it yeah, blows yeah. you away, and it's mm-hmm. all percussion based. And 
right, right, you know, right. you sit oh, there and you're just going, holy shit, you know. They're really doing <laughs> this? Yeah. It's, you know? It amazes. Uh, and, and, he, and he's up there on the kit. There's two guys playing a full drum kits, and um, it's the most energetic. I don't know how he makes it through without, no. you know, keeling over. But uh, but it is funny, though, because every is. now and then we will get a text, and I'm like, yeah. dude, are you? Are you, you working sleep? right now? And he's like texting me with pictures yeah. with the neon paint. And he's like, "Yeah, hang on, I'm I'm playing right now." You know, right? I just had a th- I just had a break <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to respond to you. I'm like, I'm not that important. No. Don't respond to me when you're when you're finish doing your <laughs> shit. Finish your show, then yeah. let, then get at me. Yeah. So multitasking is what it's all about. That's right. <laughs> oh, you know, it's great. That's great. So you've though. been with you've been touring for what a short what two years three years, two and a half years coming up two. on three. In September. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Who have you met that you were like, holy shit, I'm standing in front of, you know. Besides Brett, Michael. Besides yeah. Brett. <laughs> Besides Brett. Wow, it's a long list, um, but I guess I'll go. Uh, I remember back in the first year. I remember, uh, so we were in um, Clearwater, Florida, and it has on the schedule on our door. And it just says, um, the Hulkster intro. I'm like, Oh, what what is that like the Hulkster? Is he known some famous recording of uh, right? Where Pete goes, no, Hulk Hogan's going to introduce <laughs> us. I'm like, oh, you know, and he, you know, it was great. He sat on the side of the stage the whole because he plays bass. I learned that night. Uh, oh, so he's on the side of the stage the whole time. Hmm. So that was that was really cool. Um, just a memory came up. Uh, it was so funny. We were in St. Petersburg on Saturday. And the same night, Living Color was playing with Extreme, just four blocks away. Yeah. We we missed the show. I couldn't go to the show. But then on this Sunday, two days ago, a memory from a year ago came up on a, the 80s cruise. Living Color was also on. But Corey Glover, the singer, yeah. joined us on stage. So it's a video. of He just put his arm around me because I was another guy in the, in the 90s. I was just so into Bad Brains and Chili Peppers, okay. and I, we did covers of Living Color. You oh, know? God, so, uh, Call to Personality is one of my favorite fucking songs to sing. Right. Is it, oh, yeah? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It's not an easy one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no, I love so, that song. That, and then, so us playing, have Lou Graham join us. We're playing oh, Lou Graham better. songs, you know. How could this be? This can't be real. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's such a humble, nice guy, and we're touring with him uh, this summer also. And he's... D. Snyder, Twisted Sister. I was the biggest Twisted Sister fan, you know. Yeah. The him, we're pl- and not alone that we're we're playing with him. We're no, he's actually joining. We're playing Twisted Sister songs with him singing, you know. <laughs> and we're doing that with him this summer also, you know. Damn. And a Mark McGrath of uh, um, Sugar Ray, because yeah. I was just a, also yep. in the nineties. All these bands, I'm like, I'm such a. So then to for us to then even share the tour bus with Mark McGrath and. Steve Algeri from a, I was I was oh. never a Journey fan yeah. until Steve Algeri took over because I, I was like oh there's someone new singing let me buy that album okay and, you know so that album was the first album of Journey that I got into to then be playing with him and sharing the tour bus with those two guys you know was just uh, just mind blowing yeah know? all that kind of stuff all of it is crazy you know you know what That's I think awesome. what I think is cool is the fact so you. So many guys that that come on to an existing reunion kind of resurgence, Brett's resurgence into into just the mainstream music and people just it doesn't matter. He's fucking playing and people are still coming out to see him play. Yeah, but we've seen so many people on the show that have they're part of that group, but they're not. They're they're the singers always kind of the you know comes in does his shit gone. I don't like, think that that's not Brett's mo. He, he sounds to me like he's all in all the time with everybody. Is you know you're all bandmates and that's the way it is. Or am I wrong? I mean, he's a hands-on guy. You know, if he can be part of the sound check, he's going to be there. Especially when we did the um, we did um, the what do you call those amphitheater shed tour last mm-hmm. summer. Yeah, you know he was hands-on. He talked to every crew there the lighting guy he wanted to meet with everyone he wanted to, he's just a part of it all but the thing about him he's just he's like i told him i said you're you're not like james brown you work harder than james brown you know he's just he never stopped because it goes from in the morning being with the crew to do leaving to do an interview do a radio interview to uh 
getting ready to do that. And there's the meet and greet that seems to go on for an hour or two to then get on stage, to then meet with some special people to do. And if there's police officers there, because he's just non stop. He likes to be hands on, you know, and he's 110 percent all the time. You know, that's, so awesome. that's the one thing. Be, you know, be ready, be positive and let's let's do this. You know, he wants that's the kind that's, of thing he wants and to go forward with. That's so that's amazing. Cool. Yeah. You know, it, it, so many aren't like that. And we're we, we're learning some of the good and the ugly. Yeah. You know, about yeah. the band, about the that band. some guys yep. that we've idolized, you know, they always say, if you want to stay um, true to an artist, don't ever meet them. Cause it's gonna. They might easily let you down, you know. But some of the guys that you've mentioned never have. No. D. Schneider. Well, I'm 15 years old. Under the blade is out. That's it. They're still doing club scenes. I'm at a club that my parent, my father, gets me into, and the club owner says, "Sit there. Don't move." Oh, if yeah, you yeah. leave that seat, I'm having you thrown out. But you and your two friends right. could sit and we're, you know, and, and, and <laughs> Twisted yeah. Sister comes out and D. Snyder puts this show on where every muscle, every vein, he's putting everything he has into it. And and right. if you fast forward to today and you watch him on stage, can you grab that thing on top of that? Which one? That right on top of that, the credenza there. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Everything about this guy. Here, give me that. So this picture, a friend of ours, she's a photographer. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Delilah Creheli is her name. She's a photographer. She took this photo of him, and I saw that. I was like, that is that depicts everything that D. Schneider is. Putting every right. bit of sweat, blood, tears into that, into every performance. But right. guys like you're talking about, Brett's the same way. I see you on stage right. jamming out like you've been doing this for 40 years with him. And you're putting the same energy. So I don't know right. if people tell you this is enough, but you're doing it fucking justice, yes. man. It's oh, it's thanks, like you've man. been doing it for 40 it. years. I mean, yep. i very impressed with with the whole, with the whole setup. Well, extremely, yes. In one strange sense, I have been doing it for 40 years, you know. I started in 80, 83, 82, actually playing guitar, but uh, play, really playing in bands starting in about 84. But I just never had an audience to see me. Right. <laughs> so now that I do, I will still do it like I am 16 years old. There you go. <laughs> and, 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 and I don't yeah. care if you're playing in a band, and, and if someone's, whoever's listening to this that might be in a band themselves, mm -hmm. if you're playing in a band and you're playing for two people, or you're for playing it for 20,000 people. As long as you yeah. treat every show the same, you're giving it your all. Right. You know, Billy Sheehan said the same thing. He goes, here yep. we are playing with Talis, and we just got done playing a venue that had 2,500, 3,000 people right. as Talis. Yes. Okay, not Mr. Big. Nope. And then we go to another bar, and there's a table of three guys. Of three guys. And those three guys had a freaking blast. And he goes, after the show, we all just kind of hung out and drank together. And he's like, fast forward, they came up and said, we were those guys. Mm -hmm. You know, and he still remember those shows. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. Right. You just treat it right. with respect. Um, you right. can never go wrong. So, yes. you know, Jeff and I right. being local musicians, you know, yeah, we've had we've had a couple big gigs where we played for four, well, listen, we need four a, or five thousand people. Well, listen, we need a bass player. So, what are you doing in a couple of weeks? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be yeah, really yeah. disappointed, but that's <laughs> <laughs> the, the crowd yeah, might be a little it. small. You could pretty, still be playing some of the same songs, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. Thanks. Jim. No, I, I, you know it's funny that you say that only because just uh, three three while well, we were in uh, Mohegan Sun, I think that holds fifteen thousand people. Firehouse opened up. Uh, Tyson played with us. Yep. Uh, but the next day, I, I live in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and uh, a, a friend who I just met a week before, he runs this cancer foundation because he, his wife, they have five daughters together, but uh, in 2014, I believe, his wife died of cancer and only like three months notice type thing. Oh, so wow. he's dedicated his life now to helping others who lose their spouses to cancer to help pay for bills blah blah blah, blah. so i said um 
he said, can you sing on the street? You know, he, he sets up on the street sure. uh, of our town. It's like a small town. It's a historic town, but it is. So the ne- next day I, you know, it's funny cause we flew out at, we went, to, we, we left the hotel at 3 AM to get to the airport, to fly out at 6 AM to get to in Virginia at 9 AM to then drive home. I slept an hour, but then I went on the street. I just set up my little PA and it's just me singing. I was singing Sinatra mostly doing that kind of thing, but on cars driving by and people walking by just to sort of then also give, Hey, help out the foundation here. But cause oh, it was, it was, um, uh, St. Valentine's day. So he was selling flowers and chocolates and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, it's always, and I said, afterwards I said, that was the most fun I had in a long time. I was like, Oh, yep. hold on. I just played in front of 15,000 people last night. <laughs> yeah. Right. So to me to be, a, cause it was a different kind of setup too. I'm on the street as cars are driving, but I got my wireless microphone, you know, I'm just having a ball, you know, cause that's what music's all about. I could be in a homeless camp or like I said, I do a lot of senior homes. If I'm with, Four old ladies who's loving the fact that I'm singing "Fly Me to the Moon." You know, right. to me that is just yeah. as enriching as the big monster rock concert. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, the music is uh, music's a way to connect a lot of people in a, in a real right. quick amount yeah. of time. You know, and and it's their escape. They're there. They're there to get yeah. away from the shitty day, the the problems that cause them to have to want to go out. And if you can just Two people make their day better. That's how. That's why we do this. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a day job. Yeah. Jeff's yeah. got a day job. Yep. Um, we we had a friend of ours, a friend of the show. Um, we just lost him uh, to cancer. Same thing. And um, yeah. his last couple months was really tough. Mm-hmm. And the first thing we did is we we raised. Um, we we invited him to a show and we didn't tell him right what it was about and we we raised about eight hundred dollars for him um, and said you know this guy has been listening to our podcast and watching our show he watches it every day watches over and over watches yeah. some of the episodes and he says Mike how awesome he he reached out to me I didn't I I didn't know him as well then you know as much as I yeah. did to later but he goes you guys make me fucking laugh. Every day, he goes. I can't. I, mean, I can't even eat anymore because I'm my. You know, I just can't. I've got yeah problems. Right. He goes, but it takes my mind off it. I'm watching. You guys are cracking jokes. Mm-hmm. You're having fun. It's not the typical bullshit podcast or TV or anything that I'm watching. He goes, and you just bring mm-hmm. that joy. And and I said this right there. That's why we do this. Yes. That's exactly. what we do it. That's awesome. And then yeah. when we raise the money for him and we're like, oh. oh, by the way, the guy that we're this whole thing that we've been walking around all day doing 50 50 and all this other yep. shit is here and didn't know we're doing it for him. And he's a he listens to the show every day. And all of a sudden I'm looking over at the side stage and if he knows it's him at this point. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, he's yeah. and it, no, you can this see guy it. spent his whole life big, badass biker biker dude respected yeah. by every bike club mm-hmm. any doesn't matter what percentage or anything they're all respect the guy and uh and everybody's feeling that yeah. that he's hurting and you see some of the biggest burliest motherfuckers in this city just bawling knowing uh, I'm sure you know right. and, and then the winner of the 50 50 just happens to be a friend of a ours. great friend of ours and he's standing behind okay. me as we're announcing his name and he's like he looks at me and he goes <laughs> how, how if, if I don't donate if I, this money, right, am, I I am, am I a dick? Am I a dick? And we both turn around and go, "Yup." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he he did very well that day yes. uh, because of our friend, Mr. Yep. Bill Johnson. We're going to say that. So, out. Yes, Bill we Johnson. are. Uh, but right. you know, it's the same reason. You you're out on the street doing that thing, and it, how easy would it have been to say, "Dude, I just played for fifteen thousand people. I I don't need to do shit like this." You know, or even in your mind, like. I'm exhausted. I've got other gigs to play, but you did it. And that just speaks volumes. Mm-hmm. It really does. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much for what for you doing do that. to contribute. Yeah. You know. I've been given this gift. I got to use it for the right reasons, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I feel about it. Yeah. So, and to change the world, even if it's 
one person at a time or 10 or whatever, you know, that's right. what it's all about. I, uh, as I always tell this story where I, uh, sing it at a senior home and I sit down and the music starts playing. Cause I do senior homes. It's almost like I'm doing karaoke. Cause I just let the music play. I could use a karaoke song and I sing to it and I walk around and hold hand, whatever. So I sit down on the couch and I said, Hey, what's your name to this woman? And she goes, I don't remember. Oh, and wow. the song starts. So I go, wise men say and then she goes only fools rush so to not remember her own name but the lyrics to a song that who knows the last time she even heard it or yeah. ever yeah. sang it you know what i mean it just goes to show the power of music it does you know how that sticks with you it's yeah. in your soul you i know. i have a 105 year old grandmother I just sang it 105 year old's birthday two weeks ago wow good for you man and great. and and every week they have musicians come and it's to the yeah. point now that my 105 year old four foot something Italian <laughs> grandmother goes, ah, that guy's boring or, Oh, <laughs> that guy's got some pipes. I'm like, grandma, I love you. Yep. <laughs> Listen, That's when you're a hundred, when you're 105, you can say whatever you want. Oh get God. Away no. With it, oh, right? she does too though. You know what I mean? Oh, she definitely gets away with it. But like you said, the music can bring them back to that time. You know, that it's like, holy cow. You know, and she'll say, Mikey, what songs do you sing? I'm like, Grandma, nothing that you're going to know, but nothing I you're going to like. Try. You know, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to play, you know, crazy bitch for uh, my no. grandmother, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah. But it's every generation. That's why Brett's still out there because all of us, the, this age group, they want to go back to their youth too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, and they got the money now, I guess I'll say, or whatever. And they're like, okay, we're going to that show. And we're going to relive our teenage years by watching Brett Michaels or, or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah, just watch it. When, or, you, it's, when you play the villages so down in Florida, you better watch it. You know? and, I, 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 <laughs> and even as what's funny, too, right now is when we do these uh, country fests, because that's the youth actually living it right now. Probably yeah. in 30 years, they're going to see some of these country bands again to relive their youth of that they're actually living right now. Right, you know? yeah. It's an interesting thing of seeing the different – Age, age groups and people, mm -hmm. but it's all the music and what's making them feel great, you know, That's getting cool. them away from their daily life, the troubles that they have. Type yeah. thing. So, yep. so speaking of troubles, <laughs> Oh boy. I have to segue into this. Oh boy. I want to hear, there's gotta be a, a, a point in time through, through the, your, your time with Brett, whether it happened to you or not. There give us a blooper. Give us something that, like, wow, that just happened. Something that may have happened, gone wrong, that maybe you only knew about and the audience didn't catch it, but you did? Or or vice versa. Wow. It's funny. I hate to now make up that we are such a, or not make up, but or say that we are such a finely tuned machine <laughs> that nothing goes wrong. <laughs> well, well, we'll give um, you, you start thinking about this, and I'm going to give you an example. Let's say... A local a local cover band <laughs> gets asked to play. Here we go. Gets asked to play. And our listeners heard this story, but I have to embarrass them every time I can. Oh, okay. Gets asked to play a uh, flat track race that is sponsored by the guys who do the Daytona 500. <laughs> There's going to be 6,000 people there. Yep. And some big shot, young, full of piss, not young, old, no. full of a vinegar kind of guy gets off stage and decides he's going to go into the crowd with his wireless and jump up on a picnic table and play the song and doesn't realize the picnic table is about one screw away from just totally collapsing. And this guy gets stuck on that picnic table looking for his other, other bandmates to help him down. And we have an overzealous singer that just says, no, you got yourself up there, fella, get yourself down. And he's stuck there for right, three right, right. songs. So something like that, I'm not going to point fingers at anybody. It was me, okay? <laughs> I I'll it. say it. <laughs> you know, good on you for being the one guy in the band. Like, listen, I'm going to change things up. I'm going to stand on this table. <laughs> Nobody I, wants to see this kid. This, that was 92 pounds ago. Nobody wanted to see this kid <laughs> standing on of anything, even a steel table at that point. <laughs> listen, I got I got so bold at one point that I we were playing a show – and they had a boat launch. <laughs> I get on this guy's boat. It's a, one of those party barge boats. I get on his boat. And he go. I looked at him. I said, let's see how far my wireless will go before it cuts out. Yeah. 
and we took off. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> that was great. We love that. Such yeah, you did, dick. Yeah. Anyway, I, I do that. Bring that reminds me of a story though of my back in the day. I think it was ninety two or so, because my band I had this band called Sinister Grin. We we're a, a heavy metal band, and we we're playing a field party. And the people who put on the party built a stage. So I thought this is the big time. You know, yeah. <laughs> we're on the stage, just four feet off the ground kind of thing although it still was where people were all standing sort of 10 yards back from the stage but it was dark out uh and so but i i'm playing guitar i'm rocking out and right off the stage oh. where to though my guitar hits the ground first neck Oof. the headstock the guitar into my rib you know so not even like oh fall down so i'm just like trying to climb back and i climb back up I finished the show, but even more importantly, because my plan was to see UFO that night ah. in a town an hour away, and I did. That was when Michael Shanker got <laughs> back together. Yes. But I wasn't missing that for anything. <laughs> Bruised ribs and all. <laughs> you know who would love that story is Eddie Trunk. Because he is, right, right. He's such he a, is UFO a fan. huge yeah. UFO fan. Blabbermouth. Yep. Here we come. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, I tell you right. what, Eddie really got me, I'll, I'll be honest, with you, Eddie really got me back into the hard rock scene, you know, because I, I, I'll i say I sort of left it. I was I was into Chris Isaac, you know, sort of kind of different type music. And then all of a sudden, like, what? Someone's talking about UFO? I have every album still. I have the album. <laughs> I have the Michael Shanker live in Budica. You know, like, let's yeah. break that out again. And so I just started listening to Eddie more and more and to all, about all the other different ba uh, bands of the genre. I'm like, yes, mm -hmm. I love this. This is my youth. This was me growing up. I'm now going, forget Chris Isaac. You right. know, I am going back to rocking. So thank you, Eddie Trunk. Yeah, but UFO was kind of an obscure listen, though. I mean, it wasn't they were. mainstream. They were. You know, they were, you, they were. They were there I, with, I, like, Saxton and Y&T and Fastway. I love you know. y &T. Oh, I did, too. But we always, yeah. we, we needed, it, we were like music drug addicts. It's yeah. like once you, you, now you need the bigger fit. You need, you just need everything you can listen to. And Jason Sutter said the same thing yeah, last he night. He's like, you just start looking, going down the rabbit hole of, what what new discovery can I come up with that we didn't listen to that somebody else isn't listening to? Mm -hmm. And that's when you stumbled yeah, yeah. across Twisted Sister, yeah. Motley Crue on Leather Records. Right. You know, guys yes, like that, right. you're going, fuck yeah. And everyone's like, they'll never make it. And you're like, bullshit, they won't. They're going to have their own fucking cartoons before you know it. And they did. And they did. Yeah, you know? Right, right, right. So yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, UFO. Was... I was that guy back in the day where you had the albums and you looked at it and you saw, oh, wow, Ron Nevison produces. I think I saw his name on another band's album. That, you know, it was just, yes. every, it was all encompassing. You wanted right to get it all in. Okay, yeah. awesome. I am to blame because if I got a cassette, I said cassette. Yes, I did. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah. And you take yeah, the right. inner sleeve out and it would unfold. Yeah. And you're reading the lyrics right, right. and who wrote what song. Yeah. You know. That was I was that kid, but shame on us for not looking at who produced a lot of it. Oh, I did, dude. I didn't know. Oh, we had we had Carl Kennedy on the show, and he's the one telling us we didn't do the research well, enough no, to right. say he produced the biggest Rods fan, by the way. Right? No, there you go. The, Carl's yeah, a, Wild Dogs was my album, man. I was my eighty two. I loved it. See, Non-stop. There you go. They yeah. just released some new stuff. You should hear. Yes, it. whole new album. I know yeah. it. I Crazy. Know it. See, Carl, yeah. if you're listening to this, Carl, there you go. Hit up Storm and Norman. Hit up Storm and send him a send him a free. Send him something. I should. Oh, I, I could add my Raj T-shirt. Post he makes. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yep. So he, uh, I mean, he produced two Anthrax albums. Right. Yeah. He was yeah. he Legend. was the drummer who who laid down the demo tracks for Man, Man of War. War's album before it was recorded. With oh, wow, cool. you know, know doing that. it, doing yeah. it in in I, I probably Joey DeMaio's studio, studio, which he still has one in Auburn. Mm -hmm. um, just laying that stuff down before, yeah. You know, and they offered him the gig, and he turned it down because yeah. the rods were doing the rods so were well doing back then. And he's like, "Yeah, I turned that down." And we're like, "Do you regret it?" He's like, eh, "A little bit, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit," you know. <laughs> and, and Joey's still crushing it, you yeah. know. Um, but so yeah, guys like that. I mean, how can you? 
how can you not know. appreciate? But knowing if they've done so much other stuff, uh, it, it, guys like Halligan from here in Syracuse that oh. wrote fucking, you know. He wrote with Kiss. Kiss, Judas Priest. And wrote with one of my uh, favorite bands that nobody had ever heard of was Icon. Yeah. Oh, I remember Icon. See? Icon fast album. I yes. Had, yes. yes. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. See, so I think it's cool. You, you, we, we all have the same um, the same love for some of the stuff that I believe to be set the cornerstones. You know, there's there wasn't just exactly. the one or two. There was a lot of them yeah. that never even made past our level of fandom. Um, but right. still deserve their place. And and if you see them come out now, you'd be like, fuck yeah. Yeah. I mean, if Saxton went on tour right now, I'd be like, yeah, where, where are we? I'm old enough to be able to afford a plane ticket. Let's do it. You know? You want me to look it up? You mean on... Saxton, right? You're Saxton. Saxton. Saxton? Yeah. 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 You know. Because they're they're opening up for Judas Priest right now opening. in Ireland. They just Correct. started a tour. So anyway, it's good for them. They just came out with a brand new full yes, they did. I love it. I don't yep. have that much money to piss away to go to <laughs> Ireland. Yeah. You just said you're going to buy a plane ticket. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. See? <laughs> Called me out. See? What? Right, right. Edit. I got to edit this part. <laughs> <laughs> Big Pop is a liar. You're a liar. Yeah, yeah there you go. There he is. <laughs> God just joined in. Um, what? Are you coming around here at all anytime soon? I Cause... just looked at their tour dates and no, they're not. Well, it's close. Jersey. Oh. New York City. Where? New Connecticut. Hampshire. New Hampshire, I think, was the... Let me see. Although my my uh, oh, my, he's got my nephew, what the hell am I doing on the internet? Then? My my nephew's <laughs> my my nephew's going to be down at Quantico for uh, for the next uh, I forget how long. Oh, Maryland! Oh, he's joining the Marines? Yes, he uh, he's just he's just graduating uh, Norwich. He's going in sec- uh, second lieutenant. So yeah, he just did the officer training school down there, and uh, you got June. He gets 20, sworn in in a couple weeks. June twenty first. I worked in Quantico for twenty years. So. Oh no shit. Yeah, that's a that's a cool. Just retired place. last week, actually. So funny. <laughs> really? Oh, God bless you. Congratulations. Uh, Wildwood, oh, yeah. New Jersey. Wildwood, New Jersey. June twenty first. Yeah, I'm looking myself here. If there's anything, I thought uh, there was in New York, but now I don't see. I don't see one either. And then also in New Jersey at the PNC Bank Art Center. That's in August. The yeah, August thirtieth. Uh, New Hampshire. Guilford at Guilford, the Bank New of New Hampshire Pavilion on August 31st. I think that's the whole uh, Party Gras 2.0 tour it with is, Pete yeah. Schneider and Lou Graham. Yep. Oh, that'd be a terrible one to go to, Jeff. I know it would too. Jesus, Lou Graham and oh, here's Schneider. something. I think I don't know if it's a secret, but I'll just say it. it's October 19th, Turning Stone, Just Verona, so you know. New York. That's, Dude, that's 33 minutes from here. Oh, yes, it is. All right. You guys are on the guest list. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. But don't tell me about the show yet. Nope. <laughs> yeah. That's a secret. For all of you listening, please ignore that. Ignore what he's just said. <laughs> do we, that, do you it, want us to edit that out? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. It's all good. The 11 people that listen to this I, show are So good. it's October. Yes. My mother. Okay. Yeah. Stop it. That's it. It'll, you know what it's going to be? It'll be the fucking week that I'm in Chicago playing that show. That's okay. I'm going to go. I'll, I'll blow <laughs> off Chicago. <laughs> Screw it. I don't even want to play that show. That's I just bad. got the set. They sent me the set list today, and, and I'm like. And the funny part <laughs> is, if they're going to be here, I wonder if my wife has met Brett twice. So I don't know. Is that her hall pass? That's what I'm thinking. No. No. I got a funny feeling no. that's not going to happen. No. <laughs> Unless lead is there. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, that's all. Yeah, we will definitely be we'll, there for that. We'll, we'll go with it. Ma- yeah. Michael, get in Not touch with you. We'll, we'll do some stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, we we, we want. That, that's we'll one a, thing. Um, you know what? We get a drink before. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We, we, I love to. Anytime, uh, even remotely close to the area or something, let us know. We we would love to uh, to break bread with you, yeah, you know, and and you've been on the See show. You. So if you have something, even for your own, it doesn't yeah. have to be the Brett Michaels something, you know. If you have something for yourself, if yeah, if you're if you got us know. time and you want to bring the show on the road, there's a lot of venues we've been bringing a lot of yeah. the guests from this show up here, up here oh, yeah. to play. Um, and there's a lot of promoters that we deal with. We can help you with backline. We can help you with all that stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks. Yeah. So you know, uh, Femza Rock. 
Yeah, just June twenty second. Give me this shout out because uh, you're welcome. Two shows, <laughs> no right. You're welcome. You're Pepper welcome. Rock. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll do whatever we can to Was bring uh, to bring you up. Yep, and and bring the Storm and Norman band up. Yeah, you know, uh, love to hear it. That's the funny thing. I said uh, after a while, I had to cancel a lot of shows because even when there's weekends that are off and I book some, then Brett, then nope, he's booking it anyway. I would have had to cancel. So I'm, you know, I got two shows with Storm and Norman set up just around here. We'll see if they even go through or not. But uh, you know. See what happens. As long as I'm with Brett, I'm like, yeah, right. Can't do it. What happens is, Too busy. is if if yes. you're if you're doing a gig on a Friday with Brett and nothing's on Thursday, you book some right. local club. You're right. You know that's right. Jeff did yeah. that with with tinnitus. Um, yeah. When he was with Blue Man Group, Blue Man and he's Group. touring all over the world, and he's playing like this place in Turkey with Blue Man Group, and he's like, "Well, we got a day off the day before." So all the guys in Blue Man Group started this other band, and they would play all these really? clubs. He's like, yeah, well, we had, like, the free tour riding the buses to all these other gigs. Right, 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 right. And they right. did it just just for shits and giggles and yeah. had a blast with it. Wow. So That's amazing. We'll hook Good you up. Him. Yep. <laughs> right. Okay. Deal. Norman. Deal, deal. It's so, been a great, yes. great pleasure yes. speaking with Huge. you. Huge. Yeah, had a blast, man. I had, had such a blast with you guys. Told you. Cool. Did we right. tell you you were gonna have fun? <laughs> yes, you did. Oh man, we will we will it. do this again. We, yeah. we love to have people come back and you know tell us what's been going on, where you've been, how things yeah. are going, and uh, that like was said, great, man. Anything you want to promote? If you got please something, let us know. Let us know, and we'll 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 plug it for you. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much. You know, I just came out with a new album with the Storm and Norman band. So, uh, okay. Uh, it's on every outlet there is the old Spotify, YouTube, whatever it is. Sure. But, uh, you know, check out the new Storm and Norman band called Rock do It that. Up is the album, 11 songs. So, okay. uh, there you go. Enjoying that. Yeah. And if you Thank guys, you guys. And by the way, yes. Go ahead. I just want to say, last, you know, I just think that's so great because what you guys are doing is keeping a culture. You know, everything's everybody has their different area. What's your culture? What are you into skateboarding? Or are you into yoga? Whatever. You're keeping the hard rock culture active and vibrant and going. So thank you, Big Papa and Jeff, for doing that. Man. Thank you, Keep brother. Keep at it. Much appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Really um, appreciate it. Stick around. Definitely be sharing this. So Good. people, uh, when you do go to 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 listen to his album, yeah. Send us the messages to let, let how many know. people know that want the Storm and Norman band to come to, to, to come to Syracuse and play. Yeah, so that All we right. could so yeah. we could have you booked at one of our f- venues that yeah. sponsors the show. Yep, we're not going to mention Sharky's Event Center or <laughs> Average <laughs> Joe's <laughs> Beer Nasium. Right. Uh, however, however, if we were to mention there. those, you know, yep. tickets will be available through the show uh, if you need to. Uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, uh, awesome. brother, stick around for uh, just a minute. Yep, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna roll the credits out, and uh, we'll right. come right back to you. Yes, so, there okay. you go. Thank you. All right, guys, we're out. You've heard it. You did. Here comes the music. It is. I can hear it. <laughs> I like it. You've been listening to the good, the band, the ugly. I'm Big Papa. I'm Jeff. We want that to- is Storm and Norman. That is Storm and Norman. There you go. We want to thank Auk Medical Supply, Sharky's Event Center, DJ Life's the Beats, Good Nature Brewery, Uncle Jimmy's Local Live Music, The Print Shop Underground, Snarky Productions, and Coffee, Coffee Break. Break. Coffee. And don't forget, Ultimate Ears. Ultimate Ears. Ultimate Ears, we want to thank you because we love you and we can hear so much better yes. because of you. Our message to everybody always, always is be good to each other. Don't be a dick. Yep. And uh, do something nice for somebody. Yeah. That's pay all. it forward. Just once. Yeah. And if you see me behind you at Dunkin' Donuts, don't pay for the fucking latte. <laughs> don't be a dick. <laughs> Peace, everybody. Recording stopped. Shut up. <laughs> Recording stopped. I did it. <laughs>